October is a scary month. Not because of Halloween so much, but because Thanksgiving and Christmas are barreling down on us. It's just a little over a month until the holiday season starts with Thanksgiving. But I love autumn. I love the leaves changing. As our sign has said uh, yesterday, at least, uh, all the leaves in autumn are like flowers, different colors, and just the beauty springing forth from the trees. I love the, the crisper air, whenever that's going to arrive. It hasn't yet. It's still like mid-August out here, 70s overnight and humid. But I love this time of year, mostly because I get to look forward to fulfilling my purpose as a pastor, which is to lead special worship services and events that are coming up in this time of year. We have all kinds of things coming up. Uh, we got the Thanksgiving dinner and we've got the fall fest and we've got all kinds of things with the special worship services at Thanksgiving and Advent and Christmas. That's my purpose, but what's your purpose during this time of year? Maybe it's pumpkin spice lattes, yum. Maybe it's getting the gutters cleaned out, yuck. Maybe it's getting a knee fixed, not quite yet. Maybe it's just getting through the day, each and every single day, which I think is what most of us are going through. We all start life with some kind of purpose. The moment we're born, our number one purpose is to find air, and once we do, then our purpose becomes to find food. That's the purpose we're born with. But then, as we go get older, our purpose is to find, could be fun, an education, to be good at baseball. Okay, yeah, there's other sports as well. Maybe it's more fun, and then, when we get a little bit older, our eyes are open to the opposite sex, and we are looking for relationships. A little bit older, we're looking for money, a career, but finally, Eventually, we all are looking for a fulfilling purpose that will last in our lifetime. And that is where the rich young man was in Mark 10. He was searching for purpose in his life. How do I know that from the few short verses we have of this man in Mark chapter 10? We don't know too much about him. We do know he was young and he was rich. But we also know from the text and his question of Jesus that he was looking for purpose. Being young and being rich, he found it did not fulfill his purpose. And so he asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? This is what all of us are actually asking in some form or another, in some way or another. We are all asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The rich young man realized being young wasn't going to last, and riches didn't fulfill him, and so he comes to Jesus. He knew enough that the answer to his question was found in Jesus. Unfortunately, he doesn't stay with Jesus. The answer was not to his liking. Because he was young, because he was rich, we sometimes call him also the rich young fool. Because he was putting his trust in his riches, he was so rich, he felt that giving it away would not accomplish what he was looking for. Even though Jesus actually said, do that and you'll have treasure in heaven, and follow me, which is truly the answer to inherit eternal life. Follow Jesus. Luther nailed that down 500 years ago. He nailed down what we're all looking for. A God we can love and a God who loves us. Luther was looking for that in his life. That was the purpose he was looking for. And unfortunately, he could not find it in the world. He looked for it in the world following what he thought his father wanted him to do. Study the law. Become a lawyer or a city official or some such. Maybe even teach law in a university. 
But Luther found that that did not fulfill his purpose. And so he went to the only other place you could go. He was going to the world, didn't find it, so he went to the church of his day. He joined a monastery. He became a priest. And he still didn't find what he was looking for because the church, sadly, at that time, was not following the entire word of God. The church was telling him what the world was telling him. Here is what you do. And if you do this, you will find your purpose. Luther did all that and didn't find his purpose because the church had forgotten what Jesus said to the rich young man. Yes, there were the commandments. They got that part right. But Jesus said, come, follow me. And when Luther finally figured it out, he had some help. He had a father confessor who pointed him to the scriptures, the follow me part. Because Jesus is the word of God. And so Luther found his purpose in God's holy word. And he brought this word to the people. He put it in a language they knew. So they could follow Jesus as well. And that is where we find ourselves today. We find our purpose in the word of God in Jesus Christ himself. As John tells us, he is the word made flesh. And Jesus' purpose was to forgive our sins, to remove from us that which is stopping us from following him, from getting back to God. Jesus' purpose was to save us from a devil who wants to condemn us, from a world who wants to mask us into submission, and from our sinful human nature that leads us away from God. Jesus fulfilled his purpose by dying on the cross forgiving all our sins, rising from the dead again three days later, and giving us this full, abundant life here in time and eternal life in heaven that will last forever. And so Jesus tells us the same thing he said to the rich young man. Come, follow me. Leave everything else that's going to hinder you behind and follow me. And as a church family... We have now our purpose to follow Jesus and to share that purpose with others by seeing out in the world that boundless need. Everyone has a need. It could be financial, could be emotional, could be physical, could be spiritual. But the answer to all of this need is the boundless love of Jesus Christ. It is boundless. It is not for a select few. It is for all people, as John 3, 16 tells us, God so loved the world. Boundless love. And so we share with them. We hear, we listen to what their boundless need is, and we bring them Jesus. And the Holy Spirit then uses that to bring boundless hope to a world desperate for some kind of hope. Jesus continues to do this for us in the sacraments of baptism, the sacraments of the Lord's Supper, the means of grace, which are his word and sacraments. And that is our living legacy today, 500 years after Martin Luther. Now, if this sounded like a Reformation sermon, that's because it was intentionally to sound like a Reformation sermon because I don't get to preach on Reformation Day this week, this year. We got a guest preacher coming in, Pastor Kurt Taylor, and he will be preaching on Reformation Day, so I had to get my Reformation Day sermon in a little bit early, which is, Jesus is our boundless love that meets all the boundless need of the world, and so we have that boundless hope that we want to share with others. As Jesus says, come, follow me, in Jesus' name, amen.